Who don't know me, I'm Miklos. Um, I started my LibreOffice journey as a writer developer at CISA, and now I'm a bit global productivity, doing all sorts of consultancy and, and a bit of online work as well, which is the source, uh, um, which is the topic for this talk. Um, so we will first talk about sanitizers, then fuzzers, and third about uh, stream backups. Okay, so, can you, what uh, Miklos, can you share your screen? Uh, is it not shared? No, no. Yeah, oh, so that's a shame. Yes. So let's is try it? again. Yeah. And um, Kendi is doing some noise. Yes. Thanks, Kendi. <laughs> uh, so, is this better now? Uh, yes. Thanks. Ah, okay. Yes. So we see everything. Thanks. Yeah. Good. Uh, so regarding um, sanitizers, uh, sanitizers are compile time instrumentation uh, tools inside the Clang and other compilers so that you can build your code with uh, special compile time flags and it will do um, um, additional checks at runtime to check for undefined behavior or some kind of other problems and, and more. Um, each of these sanitizers are typically something you can use in isolation. So if you would like to use multiple sanitizers, then you need to have multiple builds. This is quite annoying. On the other hand, at runtime, this allows a much faster performance. So unlike Walgreens, which is very slow, but this is something that uh, you can run on a staging server, for example. Uh, now, there is a special case for the undefined behavior sanitizer and the other sanitizer. That's something you can combine. So that's what we do. And the environment for running cool under sanitizers is that we reuse the um, uh, LibreOffice um, core Git uh, settings as is. Uh, so we take a core checkout, which is known to be passing um, make check there on the core side already. And then we uh, build online.git uh, code um, with the same compiler, same tool chain, same compiler flux. And uh, make check like the C++ tasks for, for the online site are also passing down under sanitizers. Um, some tweaks were needed there. Uh, sometimes we had two aggressive timeouts for tasks and that uh, needed uh, some uh, extending. And in some other cases, they actually found badness and we had to fix them. Um, at the moment, Cypress tasks are not something that we run under sanitizer. So the Tinder box we have, or the Jenkins job we have, is, um, is uh, building with uh, Cypress disabled. So that's something that um, uh, we could try out first locally, uh, see what are the issues, if there's just noise or it finds something useful, fix the problems, and once, once it's passing, then it could be a continuous effort again. Um, and uh, for exactly what Clang version to use, what uh, environment variables to use, what compile flags to use, that's a lot of a lot of things, and it can quickly lead to non-interesting problems. So what we do is that we reuse the LibreOffice uh, development environment, uh, LOD.get environment. Um, Stefan Bergman for the LibreOffice site spent lots of time on fine-tuning that, and we just reuse that as is. For the online side, this also helps that we have um, a same tool chain on the core side and on the online side, so it can't get out of sync. Uh, now, once you have sanitizer set up, then you can do fuzzing as well. Uh, you could do fuzzing in, in itself, but it's much more interesting in case you combine it with sanitizers. So the idea is that um, for the admin fuzzer, we take the incoming traffic, a WebSocket traffic on the admin console, and we turn it to a fake file format. It, uh, it will be a more or less plain text file. Um, each line is representing one incoming uh, WebSocket text message. And based on that, we can uh, replay that uh, file format uh, with um, admin, um, admin socket handler. And uh, we can see if uh, the, this handle message member function is uh, handling the, that uh, data correctly. Even it can be like intentionally tricky data and it's basically untrusted user input or in case it, it finds some problem. And finding some problem is the piece where sanitizers are happening because then if you have some tricky input, then we can make sure that uh, it's not just passing by accident, but actually it's mostly free from undefined behavior. The nice thing is that um, the um, 
the fuzzing fuzzer itself is really just a few lines of code. What you see here in the slide is almost the complete fuzzer code. So what we do is just we create an instance of this um, admin console. Um, then we read that uh, incoming uh, byte uh, array um, as, a, as a text file line by line, and we just feed each line to the to the admin console. So nothing complicated there. And even this one already found six problems in the in the past. And uh, for the majority of these problems, that was something that was introduced recently, and we could just fix it and prevent bad nuts and um, ship good code to the customers. Uh, now, uh, out of the three fuzzers that we have uh, at the moment, the second one is the client session fuzzer. Uh, this fuzzer was the fuzzer, like that fuzzer. Uh, initially, it was the first one. It, it is testing what's uh, incoming on the web socket from a browser editing client. And um, um, as mentioned earlier, we use this fuzzer with Absan and ASAM. Um, for for the online Git uh, code, we build exactly almost almost the same as a normal online build. It just built in the special environment, and uh, you use um, one additional flag enable for, enable fuzzers um, to do, build the fuzzers. Uh, this is needed because the fuzzers build is not producing a WSD binary. It will produce a library, and then later it builds um, um, a library from the online code, and then this library statically. Um, linked to the fuzzer executable because that's how fuzzing works um, in the simplest way. And the third um, uh, fuzzer we have is the HTTP response fuzzer. This was introduced when Ash was working on the async save work, which required a, a custom parser for HTTP responses. Uh, this found three problems so far. Um, if I remember correctly, all of that was something that was um, introduced recently and we could just uh, quickly fix that and, and it, uh, it was not shipped uh, to an actual stable release. And once we have um, these fuzzers, it's nice to have the training locally, but um, if it does not find anything in a day, it does not mean that as it mutates its input and tries to find interesting uh, code paths. Um, it doesn't mean that um, it's, um, um, it won't find something tomorrow. So at the moment, what we have is that uh, we have all the three fuzzers running all week. And then uh, what they do is that they run for a week. And then if they don't find anything, then they quit. And then they pull in the core git, they pull in the Collabora online checkout, they do the build, and then they start again. And if something breaks, then we get a mail notification and we can download the producer and investigate the actual undefined behavior locally and provide a fix for that. Um, the last thing I would like to talk about is uh, string vectors, which is, um, we, we found um, this pattern during fuzzing that uh, in many cases we deal with, with these web sockets matches, messages, which is a vector of strings. And it's very easy to forget uh, checking for the uh, array bounds before accessing a given element in that uh, uh, vector. Um, and fuzzing was finding this, this problem pattern again and again. And um, if we are at, at these uh, string vectors, then the other problem was that if you split up a long string to these um, uh, tokens, then um, the STD string will create a non terminated um, buffer for each of these tokens, which means lots of allocations. And this uh, allocation was actually showing up on performance profiles. So what we do is that instead of using STD vector of strings, uh, we have um, a string vector, which is a single underlying string. And then we have tokens to that, which is really just an offset and some lengths kind of pointers into that. And we have a safe API, if safe API around that, so that in case you would accidentally uh, read past the end of the array, then we would just remove, uh, return an empty string. And um, to prevent the unwanted allocations, um, I wrote some um, simple AST matcher. Uh, which is uh, which was looking for all of these cases where you are invoking an operator equals where the left hand side is uh, a result value from the operator brackets of um, um, std string, and then in that case we can re rewrite this to some uh, equals member function on the string vector, so that we don't have to do this um, allocation of the template. This concludes my talk. Uh, the summary is that we have no uh, sanitizers. 
fathers these are running you know in the jenkins job again and again as a continuous effort and hopefully this is making online a safer choice for everyone thanks uh, i believe them thanks have the uh, the question of the section exactly yes yes 